of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2015, brought to you by Mirantis. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Rick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Silicon Valley. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. Joined Jeff Frick, who's the general manager of our CUBE operation based here in Palo Alto. We're in Mountain View at the Computer History Museum for the OpenStack SV, hashtag OpenStack SV, or hashtag OSSV15. Join the conversation. Our next guest is Sheng Liang. Sheng Liang, CEO of Rancher Labs. Uh, welcome to theCUBE, hot startup uh, in the container space. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much, John. So we met at DockerCon. You were at the Mayfield party, obviously backed by Mayfield and Nexus Ventures. You guys have a growing team. Rancher implies herding the cats or herding the sheep. I mean, Don't I wouldn't call, cattle, I diesel. would say the developers are more like <laughs> bulls these days because they're really driving the innovation. So obviously developers are hot right now from That's mobile, right. cloud, That's kicking ass, taking names. Right. What do you guys provide? I mean, let's talk about your company, Rancher, yeah. Container management is an infrastructure share what you guys are doing. Exactly, so we, I mean, we really see containers are getting adopted very quickly by developers, by DevOps team, and they're beginning to be put in production. And, but to, in order to put containers in large scale production, they need tools for that, they need management for that, they need a way to hook up the containers into the cloud infrastructure. So this is why, where Rancher comes in. Rancher is effectively a container management platform that let organizations uh, put together a container service. You know, just yesterday, a Google container engine went GA. It's, it's a big deal for us. You know, <laughs> it's 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 big deal for the industry in yeah. a sense. I think it's going to really. I know Amazon uh, container service has also been in production for a while. I think container service is really the next generation of a you know of a, a application deployment platform. It's going to become very popular, and we make organization build container services. Shane, so I want you to share with the folks watching uh, mm -hmm. what you've learned in this market today and, and, and compare that vis-a-vis -vis your experience. You have a lot of experience with internet infrastructure right. going back to web 1.0. Exactly. And now <laughs> we're in this new cloud mobile, internet of things conversions, big data, massive transformation happening, completely flipped upside down. Um, what's the big deal? I mean, you had a company, cloud.com, sold to Citrix. You've been in the action Right. Going back to web 1.0. Right. What's the big aha? Uh -huh, what's the epiphany? What can you share to yeah. folks? Why is this moment in time so compelling? This is a this is a great question. You know, I had a we had a great run at cloud.com, helped hundreds of organizations build, you know, very large scale clouds. And uh, uh, if you count uh, the, the number of open source installations, the number is probably even bigger. But at the end of the day, one of the challenges we ran into is uh, is a lot of these clouds where they were built, they were used, but the growth is actually not as big as, as I would have hoped for. You know, if you look at the cloud landscape today, when CloudStack, OpenStack got started, we thought we'd turn cloud into a commodity. We thought there would be, you know, hundreds, you know, if not thousands of clouds. There'll be public, private, hybrid, and you essentially can get uh, infrastructure resources from anywhere, right? You can get cattle from anywhere. <laughs> these are cattle. Uh, but, you know, but you look at the market today, still the big private uh, public cloud providers that pretty much dominate, and on the private cloud side, you know, server virtualization is still probably a, a very big side uh, side of the market. And, and what we're excited about containers is finally there's a there's an application packaging format, an application management platform that a lot of developers are gravitating toward. So if we could kind of build cloud 2.0, you know, build a container cloud that, that can really consume resources from anywhere. And I think that is, and it can really support the container workload well. I think that could potentially be how the computing in the uh, cloud industry is going to play out in the next few years. So container cloud is a great way to position it. I like to use that word. But let's take that and, and drill down on it. So right. let's take container cloud and we'll just kind of make up a new category. Right. Gardner can now cover it. We call it container you know, service. Really, container service. Sometimes. I'll yeah. call it container cloud because it's a nice, okay. nice buzzword. Okay. Gardner get on that, you know, get, get on a new category. <laughs> 
invented on theCUBE. But what that means is containers have shown the market a, a path of lightweight deployment, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but also traversing multiple environments. Exactly. And that's a use case that developers want. They don't want to have to deal with the plumbing and the provisioning, all the hassles, all the use cases. It's like, it's like, it's like really, a bad exercise for the developer. Right? Exactly. It's like a rock fetch. They don't really uh, want to think about infrastructure yeah, it's like, anymore. Why should I go fetch rocks and create a pile, exactly. move the pile around here and there? We want to focus on the development. So that implies lightweight. Right. What's going on under the hood? Because OpenStack, Cloud Foundry, even Amazon, mm -hmm. which is very nice stack right now, mm -hmm. which is lighter than those other two. Right. We have these heavy stacks, a lot of unbaked in white space in. in how do you handle, what's your advice there? What's your take on that? Does it need yeah. to get lighter? Is it too fat? What we're seeing is, uh, um, what we're seeing is people who use containers tend to not use all the capabilities out of the underlying you know, infrastructure cloud platform. I mean, obviously infrastructure is essential. Containers don't really manage infrastructure, right? So you need virtualization, you need OpenStack, you, uh, you need Amazon Web Services, you need Google Cloud, but it, but at some point, I mean, give you give you an example. You know, I, one of the great things I always loved about uh, Amazon Web Services is it's very rich AMI library. You know, that's something OpenStack hasn't even caught up yet. It's just just the fact you can get any software package pack, packaged up as an AMI, and then you can just deploy it. It's very vibrant ecosystem, very good. That's easy to stand up, it's lightweight. Yeah, exactly, right? it's, it's great, but, but then you look at containers. If you look at Docker Hub, that, that what really initially attracted me to Docker was that ecosystem turned out to be even bigger. You know, I just, I just saw uh, Ben Golub's interview uh, at the, actually at, at DockerCon. I think, I think maybe even on this program, yeah. he, was, yeah. he was saying something like uh, the, 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 the Docker Hub images has grown to like, uh, if I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm getting it wrong, but I remember it's like 150,000 images. That's just, that's just mind boggling. And yeah. it's just continuing. That's just getting, getting bigger. Yeah, it, it, but it's just the starting point, right? Docker yeah. has a long growth ahead of it. And I'm, I'm just yeah. really excited about You're going to need that. a service for the service. You need a compiler <laughs> just to deal with all that stuff, <laughs> right, right? Right, right, right. I mean, this takes us to a whole nother level. Exactly. What is that level? Can you, in your mind's eye, share what you envision that preferred architecture look like? Let's just say Rancher starts exploding, you guys are public, you're a unicorn, things are evolving, seamless integration, full orchestration. What does the preferred future look like? I mean, I think, I think what really what developers and, and application um, uh, uh, DevOps team would really like to see is focus on application de uh, development and use containers, Docker in particular, as the uh, standard packaging and distribution format, right? And then they, everywhere they go, they can rely on the fact that the uh, uh, the Docker runtime engine exists because you know the Docker runtime runs on Linux and it's going to soon run on Windows. Microsoft has shipped the, uh, 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 the, the the Windows 2016 you know tech preview and, and it, it is, it's starting to support Docker. So so we're very excited about that having the standard runtime, standard packaging format, distribution format. Then then um, software systems like Rancher comes in to really help orchestrate the infrastructure around it, making sure that Docker runtime and, 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 and the Docker uh, application orchestration systems like Kubernetes and Compose can really run anywhere, seamlessly, on any cloud. You can stand up these systems very quickly uh, and, and you can manage them on an ongoing basis. So that's kind of our vision. You, you don't, you know, you, you, uh, de developers at the end of the day don't need to worry about infrastructure as a highly differentiated and a specialized uh, a separate set of uh, issues they really need to worry yeah. about today as they develop the application. So I got to ask you the trick question now. Mm -hmm. I've been asking every guest. Mm -hmm. It's not really a trick well, question. Let me, let me ask a quick follow before you go there because I know where you're going mm -hmm. next. But you know, you said earlier that you did, the market didn't evolve in as many clouds as you thought was going to happen. W does that potentially change now with with kind of the, the container abstraction layer, making it easy so you don't have to worry about a, a myriad of kind of cloud architectures, or is it just going to standardize on these five or six, or maybe there's a couple more coming? Um, but does does a, does container change the way that potentially many, many cloud options I grow? I mean, I think containers can potentially uh, uh, commoditize cloud offerings uh, to the next level. You know, as, as all of us know, I think I think Gartner pointed out in, 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 in in their in their latest you know magic quadrant report for infrastructure as a service, basically said infrastructure as a service is highly differentiated. Right? It's not a commodity, and and at the end of the day, if developers are primarily uh, are concerned about running containers, and I would say it provides an opening, 
Right. To, to various ones. All right. Okay, I, so here's a trick question. <laughs> Does hybrid cloud really exist? Or is it a concept? Or is it a category? Is it a product line? Do customers buy private cloud? Or is it subordinate? You mean, it hybrid. You mean hybrid. hybrid? I mean hybrid cloud. Is private cloud, public cloud, we know they exist. Yeah, I, I think, I, I'm a believer in hybrid cloud. I, I always believe in hybrid cloud. You know, it's, um, uh, but in practice it's been a little bit difficult to implement. As you know, like Amazon's been the most popular cloud and they don't provide a on-premise solution, right? Imagine if Amazon provided an on-premise offering, I think hybrid cloud would have become more real. Uh, 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 but, uh, you know, but, but again, this is where, um, uh, this is in the container ecosystem though, uh, we don't tend to talk about hybrid clouds, uh, but I think it's, it's actually a very good thing because from a container, uh, Docker container perspective, the the, the, the runtime is standardized anyway. So in in essence, you know the 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 the, 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 inf the differentiation between infrastructure matters less. So we kind of almost take hybrid cloud for granted. So it's 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 the, the, that that hybrid cloud vision, it, it seems to me, has a real potential of turning into reality in the. Uh, with containers to the extent that people don't even talk about it very much, which I find it to be very encouraging. So what's the outlook on the, of the industry? I mean, right now there's a lot of underlying change. We're seeing Wall Street react to the China crisis, obviously the economic crisis in China. It's got people talking about the bubble bursting. Um, obviously in the enterprise space, certainly cloud, mobile, there's a lot of underlying change that's independent of the financial business market. Mm -hmm. So unlike the dot-com bubble, which had no underlying major transformation, it was just the web, which is the internet. I mean, that was cool, but it wasn't like massive transformation. No, I'm very optimistic about the, uh, the, the the space we're in, the space, you know, cloud and OpenStack and, and Docker and containers. I just think across the board, I mean, obviously containers are even at earlier stages of, of evolution than cloud, but, but across the board, these all represent, you know, newer, and, and more efficient way of doing things that provide more agility, so, so I'm very optimistic. A lot of people it. are scratching their heads though, saying, hey, you know, is there a bubble going to burst now? I've been saying, you know, you don't have to mm. answer for me, but I want to get your perspective on this. I've been saying that, yeah, there's a lot of underlying major transformation, disruptive enablers that are going to create a lot of wealth, mm -hmm. technology-wise. Mm -hmm. You know, got your virtualization was a starting point, you got containers, you got new developer environments, you got cloud, you got mobile. Could you share any insight what you think is going on under the hood at the infrastructure level that is disrupting the entire market, the, the wealth and the, the existing incumbent. What are the, what's the disruption factors in your opinion? What are the key elements of that technology disruption? What do you think are the biggest things that, that people aren't aware of that's to kind of keep calm people down a little bit? Yeah, I, um, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I don't, I don't tend to view these things as, uh, you know, personally, I don't tend to view these things as sudden disruptions. These movements has been going on for a long time, right? The, uh, there's just have been so many more uh, uh, application development organizations, and these things then tend to generate demand for uh, uh, tools like, you know, uh, like Docker and, and runtime systems like, you know, like OpenStack, infrastructure management systems like OpenStack. So I think it's a it's a continuing uh, 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 evolution, and I think in this. Uh, you know, in our world, it's I, I don't see it as much of a you know new sort of cloud style, cloud native style disrupting the old um, uh, style of infrastructure. You know, I, 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 what I honestly tend to see uh, in you know in large organizations where they're uh, busily you know putting together uh, software development efforts, it can barely keep up with demand, and uh, and and most people don't really want to think about infrastructure. They want to get the best well, no stuff. One's buying, I mean, yeah, people buy storage, for, for but it to they're work. not buying it the old way. They don't and, think EMC exactly. versus this, now they want. And they probably care, at the end of the day, the cost of a, what's really exciting to me is that if you think about an organization where the majority of the cost is going, it's probably, at the end, they're not going to, to even the infrastructure, right? It's going to paying for the salary of, of developers. So the fact right, that these right. new uh, new waves, whether it's you know DevOps yeah. or OpenStack or Container, make developers are more efficient. It's just going to be widely adopted. So it, yeah. Or the opportunity cost of missing something and your competitor right. gets there fast. I mean, exactly. that's where the huge exactly. the, you know, so it's, it's, changing it's, so, business So John, models. I'm afraid like this is less, of, I think containers unfortunately is less of a disruption story. Like if you say, I mean you can make an argument that. It's an accelerant. Yeah, exactly. It's an accelerant to the other disruption which exactly. is the 
the how people buy storage, they're not pure play anymore. I mean, I don't buy servers. Who, who used to be I Dell servers for the for the startups, and I want some EMC drives. Mm -hmm. With the developer market that's enabling this with containers and DevOps, people just want storage. There's no brand behind. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm seeing that's interesting trend, right? I mean, so the standalone devices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I, I mean, are, I think so. I think the general trend is infrastructure heading toward commoditization, right? Heading toward frameworks like OpenStack and heading toward, you know, all these vendors. I mean, you know, you, you don't, when you come to OpenStack conference, you don't just see a little startup storage vendor. I mean, you see, I just saw NetApp. Right. Right? The, the, Oracle's the, here. Yeah, you see the big vendors as well. Yeah. So every, I think everyone has, has something to, to, to contribute. And I, like, like I said, it's, this is really about creating new opportunity for our whole industry. All right, That's final question for you, Shang. Mm -hmm. What did you learn at cloud.com mm -hmm. that you're applying today to Rancher that's relevant in this new new normal of cloud mobile, big data, social? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think uh, what I, the one thing that really, it goes back to my original point, you know, back then we built a lot of clouds. Some of them are very successful. A lot of them were not as successful. Not that these clouds were hard to build or even hard to operate. At the end of the day, they just weren't enough. Maybe they were not priced right. They were not marketed right. So there weren't enough people using them, right? And and I think I've seen that in you know in other so cloud build they will come mentality. exactly. This is this is where I've uh, I've really uh, learned from the container space the fact that so many people just come use the technology. So I would you know personally I I focus all my effort on how many people actually use our product. It doesn't matter we just sell the product, but you know it has to lead to some consumption, yeah. right? And that's an area you that's know that's agile. That's how you that's exactly, agile adventure. Exactly. You want to see and adoption. And I think, you know, I, I hope the industry as a whole could, could, could maybe talk, we, when we're at the point, we talk less about how difficult it is to install, configure, and operate the technology. More about what are the tricks to actually stimulate adoption. You know, yeah. so that, I, think, I think that would be a very good development to have. Shane, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great to see the entrepreneurial spirit alive. You've grown an organization, you got some fat funding behind you. Great VCs behind it, you got a great team, great market. Containers are exploding, you got Kubernetes, all this orchestration happening. Absolutely. Congratulations, I hope to see you again. This is theCUBE live in Silicon Valley for the OpenStack Silicon Valley event. Uh, we're broadcasting live for us. This is our second day. We'll be right back after this short break.